This is Andy Poirot for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm like, delighted to be joined by light heavyweight Hosea Burton. Hosea, how are you doing? Pretty good, thank you. Not too bad. It's good to hear. Obviously, you come down to the gym today, catch up with everyone once again. What is the latest with yourself? Obviously, I know you're going into the Golden Contract Tournament, but last time we spoke, you said you'd like to have a bit of a, a, a warm-up bout, as it were, just before the tournament. Have you got anything lined up? No, no fights before the competition. Um, supposedly, once you sign the contract to fight in the competition, you're not allowed to fight um, anywhere else. But that was a load of rubbish because Castillo fought the other day and he was signed up for the competition. So it doesn't look like I'm getting a fight before it, but um, you know, it wasn't necessary. I didn't, I didn't really need one, but I would have liked one. It just keeps the wolf from the door, doesn't it? But um, yeah, just training hard for the competition, ready to win it. How does it feel to be back in camp, knowing that you have something effectively a big opportunity to to look forward to? Since Buglioni, like we've said on numerous occasions, just haven't had the rub of a green, and the opportunities haven't dropped for you. How does it feel to be back in camp, knowing you've got a big opportunity just around the corner? Well, the thing is, since my loss, I've been back in camp many a times, thinking I'm going to get a last-minute call up. So I've been training really hard for a long time, and then. All of a sudden, you get sick of training. You think there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But to really know this is it, you're going you're gonna to be getting the big fight soon. It just puts a bit between your teeth a little bit more and you really, it really gives you something to, to work at. Obviously, as we've mentioned, you are going into that Golden Contract tournament. How much of the guys who have been announced have you looked up on and how much have you analysed them as of yet? Um. I know a few of them. I've watched a few as amateurs, watched a few as pros. Um, you know, they're not bad. They're not bad fighters, but to be honest, I don't think none of them is in my league. Um, I think this competition has been made for me. Um, I, I really think I can beat all of them with ease. And out of the 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 six six of us in it so far. I can knock them all out. Um, knocking Bob out would be quite hard because he's an awkward customer. But I can beat Bob very, very big on points. So, um, yeah, so out of the five of them, I can knock four of them out pretty sharp. I mean, we saw in the, in the last tournament that's just gone by with uh, Lee Wood picking Davey Oliver-Joyce, who was seen as one of the favourites for the tournament. How do you expect to go about yourself if you was to be given one of the balls which allows you to pick an opponent? Do you think you'd take one of the other guys who are seen as one of the leading contenders or do you think you'd take an easier route or how do you see yourself playing out when that time comes? Listen, there's a lot of big ifs. If you get a blue ball, if the person that you want gets a red ball, you know, you could be training for somebody and have somebody in the mind and they could have a blue ball with you. I might even get a red ball, who knows? So I think... Don't really train for anyone in particular. Spire everybody, and whoever comes, comes. It, w it doesn't make a difference who you fight. You're going to fight them all one day. You know, if they win and you win, you're going to fight in the final. So it doesn't really make a difference who you fight or, or, what, or who you think you're going to fight because I might want to fight you, but you might pick a blue ball and I might pick a blue ball. You know, so that means we're not going to fight. So it is what it is. You just pick who you pick on the day. Well, I mean, hopefully we don't need to fight Hosea. <laughs> but with that in mind, you just mentioned, you know, preparing for everyone. How difficult or how different has that made this training camp in particular then? It's not made it any difficult at all, like, because I always struggle to get sparring, no matter who I'm fighting. So, you know, it's going to be a struggle to get sparring. It's going to be a struggle to get the right sparring. You know, you have self pause, you have orthodox, you have switch hitters. You know, you just... Anybody who wants to come down to the gym and have a spy, you're more than welcome. Get them in. Every one of them, if there's three or four of them, they can all do three or four rounds apiece with me. And um, look, there's nothing in this competition that I haven't seen before. You know, I've come across good boxers, I've come across big punches. Um, it's just, it is what it is. It's, it, it's a fight. You're just entering the ABAs, you're entering the schoolboys, you're entering the boys' clubs. It's one of them competitions. You come across everyone. Now, moving away from yourself, but sticking in camp. Obviously, I've seen everyone down here today. Everyone looking very sharp, very on it, as I said to Sam Hoyt just before yourself. But Anthony Crawler, his last fight, 
what's it been like being in and around his career and this final camp? Watching Anthony Crawler in this last camp, I think he would absolutely be stupid if he packed in after this fight. Because the man's on top form. I've never seen him spar better, ever. Um, I was telling him a couple of weeks ago, it's like when he first came to the gym, because when we first moved to Better Bodies Gym and he was sparring Joe Murray, it used to be a 50-50 spar, and then he used to start nailing Joe. Then he used to spar John Murray, and it used to be a 50-50 spar. And then he start equaling up and getting the better of John. It's like he's brung them years back where he's, he's really on top form. So if he packed it in after this, I just couldn't see why, because the man's earning a fortune every fight. Why, why quit when your stock's so high? I just think I just don't think he should pack in. I mean, with that in mind, you know, what what do you feel that there is left for Anthony Crawler to achieve? Obviously, a former world champion, he's fought the biggest names in and amongst his division: Jorge Linares, Vasil Lomachenko, etc. You know, what is there left for Anthony Crawler? About 15 new houses, because every fight he's having, he's earning three or four houses. You know, the man's earning loads of money. Why? You've worked all this time to get the big money, the big chances. And now you're there, why just pack it in then? You know, you know, a couple more fights, you can own half of Oldham. You know, or I just think it's daft if he, if he packed in now, now he's stuck so high. I mean, stick with camp, Callum Smith getting ready for John Ryder. How's Callum been looking? I saw him on the pads then with Joe, and it was quite frightening to see just how sharp he's looking about a month away from his fight. Yeah, Call Callum's brilliant. He's always been brilliant. Every training camp, there's never been a a wrong word out of him, you know, he he comes to the gym, does his thing, goes home. He um, Every camp, you can't say this is a better camp than he's ever done before because I think every camp's equal. He trains equally as hard every camp. He give, he, you know, he leaves no stone unturned. The man's just a machine. And I just want to circle back to the lot of heavyweight division to get your thoughts on a few things. This past weekend, well, this past Friday, Artur Baturbiev defeating Alexander Vozdik. Did you catch a fight, Hosea? I never watched all of it, no. I only watched bits of it. Um, what I've seen of it is um, Better Be Ever is absolutely frightening when it comes to power. I thought um, Gavozdik was was going to win, to be honest. You know, good boxer, couldn't punch a bit. I thought, I thought if anything, Better Be Ever could be a bit chinny, which I don't think he actually is. I just think Callum Johnson's an absolute beast when it comes to power and he could drop a tree. Um, the light heavyweight division in the world is absolutely brilliant. There's not, there's not like a weak champion. Every one of them champions. Is, there's only two champions now, is he? Or is he three? Serbia, Bivol, and Kovalev. 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 Listen, Kovalev's dying on his feet, and he. Um, if if you could fight any world champion, you'd fight Kovalev because he, he's he's done for, isn't he? He's only got four good rounds in him. After that, it's old man on you. Well, on Kovlev, he's obviously facing Canelo next. What do you make of that fight? Four years ago, Canelo couldn't get in there and do two rounds with him. Now, Canelo wins easily. Um, too sharp, too fast. Um, I wouldn't say too powerful, but he will win by knockout. The thing is, every dog has its day, and Kovlev's day is way gone. Give it three years ago, and then... Canelo has today, well, Kovalev would have won easily, but he's just one of them things. Every dog has its day. Muhammad Ali got beat when he was too old. You know, the man's too old, top and bottom of it. Now, Josh Bawatsi, another lot heavyweight, British lot heavyweight, someone who you said maybe down the line you'd love to meet and have a fight with yourself. He's facing Blake Caparello on the Anthony Crawler, well, Anthony Crawler undercard next week. What are your thoughts on that and WBA World Title Eliminator? Eddie Earn wouldn't put Canelo, uh, Canelo, Boatze into a fight where he thought there was a slight chance of losing because he's going to be fighting for a world title soon. So that fight will be a Boatze win by knockout. Um, it's just Eddie's got money invested and can see pound signs and uh, Boatze will win that fight with ease. And just moving away from the light heavies, Tyson Fury... Entering the WWE, what do you make of Tyson's move and this decision? Obviously, knowing that the Deontay Wilder rematch 
was seemingly just around the corner, depending on how his eye would have healed after his last bout. He's got a massive cut. Um, Wilder's got a fight, Ortiz. So there's no guarantee that fight's ever going to happen because, my opinion, Ortiz beats Wilder. I might be totally wrong, but I thought Wilder got through with the skin of his teeth last time. If Ortiz has got the legs to finish a fight, Ortiz wins easily. Um, might get slated for this, but I, I, I just seem to think Ortiz wins that fight. So that fight with Wilder was never going to come off anyway. Um, now, Tyson's eyes healing up. He's getting paid fortunes. He's, he's already conquered boxing. He's going to conquer this uh, WWE. He's, he's just a man, isn't he? He's... he's you could say he's the pantomime villain, he's the pantomime hero, he's the real life hero. You know, he's he's just an unbelievable man, isn't he, when it comes to achievements from being around the corner from suicide to being on top of the world again. So what there's nothing Tyson can't achieve. And with him having this bit of time off, enjoying himself to become a WWE wrestler, which we've all dreamed of doing. At one stage of our life, we all wanted to be Bret the Hitman Art. We always wanted to be Undertaker, Hulk Hogan, Sting. All of them, we wanted to be one of them. Now he's going to be one of them. So, the man's smashing life. Rolling back the memories there, Jose, and naming some of those they, wrestlers. They the men who we used to watch when we was little, though. Because me and Tyson used to play with wrestling men. We used to play with the Cowboys and the Indians and toy cars and whatever. You know what? Wouldn't surprise me if he come a NASCAR driver for a little while because you know we always wanted to do that as well. So, Tyson, if you if you're gonna um, do any of that NASCAR race and get me to come with you as well, mate. I mean, what was Tyson like growing up? With what what was he like? I've spoken to John, his dad, about him. John said that he was very quiet and he was the complete opposite to what we see now. Was that the same Tyson that you can remember? Tyson off camera is the same man as he always always was. Was he always a comedian? Great fun to be around at all times. Um, we used to play hide and seek, tig, you know, just yeah. child games. What we, but the f funny thing was, at about nine, he looked about sixteen. <laughs> so we looked a bit stupid when we was climbing up trees and playing knock a door run, hedge hopping and all that crap. But it was it was a brilliant life what we had. There was me, Justin, and Tyson, were three first cousins. We was inseparable. Um, we used to just do everything together, but. We all got older, we all got married, and we all become leading our own lives. We're all trying to do our own thing. Justin was never into boxing. Tyson wasn't into boxing as much as, as me. I was a boxer all my life. Tyson used to do whatever, you know. He, he used to go to the gym now and again, but he was never ever going to get a fight because he was so big. But Tyson's just smashing life. Just move away from Tyson. This weekend, just trying to get... He's Commonwealth champion. Couldn't do four rounds with me. Ricky Summers boxed and got a draw the other night. Couldn't do four rounds with me. Who else was fighting for the Eliminators for the British? Do you know any more um, half decent ones? Oh, the other two, Shakan Pitters, um, offered to fight him. I, I got offered him. I got offered Shakan Pitters. Yeah. That never came off because they said he wasn't ready for me yet. I got offered. What's he called? Uh, Richards. I got offered him. That fight never came off. They're all fighting for eliminators for the British, and I can punch all their heads in with ease. In fact, I can beat the best two of them in the same night. So, let's talk about some good British fights. Well, I'm in this competition now, so anyway, so I can't fight them. But listen, as soon as I win the competition, any of you is welcome to have a scrap with me. I'm sure they'll remember that one, Isaiah. Um, just moving on to this coming weekend, Regis Pro Grey, Josh Taylor, World Boxing Super Series final. Your thoughts on that one? I don't know much about Regis, whatever his name is, but Josh Taylor is absolutely brilliant. He's the best Scotchman to ever put a pair of gloves on. And I used to think Ricky Burns was. Um, in fact, I'm still a very big fan of Ricky Burns, so sorry, Ricky. Um, I don't know who's going to win that fight. Probably the bigger man, and that's Josh. So, 
on that undercard, we'll see David Price versus Derek Chisora. A lot of people seen it's kind of a 50-50. A lot of people saying either Price in the first four or Derek maybe down the stretch will stop David. What are your thoughts on it? My, my thought on that fight, everyone thought um, Dave Allen was going to beat Price. And I said, there's not a British man other than Tyson who can beat Price. Now, I might be wrong, but um, for skill set, Price is brilliant, but you just couldn't bet him because he's got a mental block in his head. If it goes past four, there's a very good chance of him losing. Now, David Price, I mean, the other old fella, Chisora, he's as tough as they come. But to outbox him, you can outbox him with ease because look what Tyson done to him in the second fight. But I just think it's going to get to four rounds and then Price is going to um, gas out. Not gas out, but give up and get knocked out. I mean, on that undercard, Lawrence Coley challenges for the cruiserweight title against Belgian Yves and Garbu. Is he the one who's on training that? from uh, Ingalls? Yes. He's very small, isn't he? He was I, a significant I, I've, seen, I've seen that lad in, in, in face-to-face. He was with that Amir Khan from Sheffield. And he's just very small. Coley's as awkward as any man ever put a pair of gloves on. So I just, I just see it being a messy fight and a Coley winning. Well, Jose Burton, I've kept you for long enough now. I know that this is probably. No one's going to watch this because it's too long. I mean, you say that now, but I'm sure we'll get a, we'll get a, a decent viewing. But as always, I appreciate your time. Thanks, speak to myself and Boxing Social. No problem. Thank you very much.